Well, it has been, actually we were talking about this just a few minutes ago, off camera, off recording, around four or five years or so since I visited Park City where there is a very special procedure that, that I discovered a few years ago. I did a whole story on it. I came down here and I did what's called a full body stem cell makeover where the two physicians sitting right here with me basically went head to toe, soup to nuts, and did my entire body with stem cells. And since then, a lot has happened in terms of the science of stem cells and regenerative medicine, in terms of what's used, how the protocol goes, and oh my gosh, if, if you're actually interested in things like pain management with age, the whole like anti-aging and longevity thing, but kind of the pointy edge of it, sexual performance, aesthetics, this is basically like the creme de la creme of protocols. But it's really, it's, it's really kind, of, kind of difficult to wrap your head around everything that goes on and how this thing actually came to exist. So I've got Dr. Amy Killen, and Dr. Harry Adelson <laughs> with me today. And uh, after we record this podcast, we're actually about to go in. And I'm super grumpy because I haven't been able to have breakfast this morning. And I got to do all these special things to get ready to go under anesthesia and get this protocol done on me. So that being said, the, the history of this is, is super interesting because didn't it start with you being, being injured, Harry? Pretty much, yeah. So I, I had a... I had a rock climbing injury back when I was in my first year of naturopathic school and I tore the labrum in my shoulder and I was getting ready to do this big climbing trip to France, which mm -hmm. is, you know, the birthplace of modern sport climbing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tore my labrum in my shoulder and I saw an orthopedic surgeon and he said, well, I can put a scope in there and I can cut away a piece of cartilage. Uh, it'll help you in the short term, but it's going right. to give you problems later in life. Alternately, I can give you a steroid injection. Similarly, it'll help in the short term, but it's actually going to further degenerate your cartilage. Wait, I knew that about the cortisol, but but the scopes, that can also be something that comes back to bite you. Well, later you're on. cutting stuff away, and you need yeah. that stuff later in That's life. That's a good point, yeah. You know? okay. So then the, the, the evolution of full body stem cell makeover was you know in the early days back in 2010 2011 when i was first starting very mm -hmm. few people had heard of stem cell therapy in the united states so the only people who were coming to me were cowboys were wyoming ranchers and the reason mm -hmm. for that was because there was a large animal veterinarian up there who was doing stem cells on horses and these guys had these very expensive workhorses yeah. who were getting old and couldn't work anymore and they wanted to get a couple more years out of them and they'd take him to this guy and he would do stem cells on the horses and they could see with their eyes then you know the horse couldn't work and now it could work mm -hmm. and so they'd say to this guy well can't you you know do that to my low back and my neck and the guy would say well no i can't because i'm a veterinarian but there's a guy in <laughs> yeah. park city doing it go to him yeah so i started getting these busted up cowboys who just had literally arthritis throughout their entire bodies so i do these huge treatments i do their neck and their low back and both hips and their knees and both shoulders and completely as a joke I started calling it full body stem cell makeover, like really like tongue in yeah. cheek. Yeah. Well, then I started getting the biohackers in and I would right. get people say, well, can't you just do my whole body sort of preventatively? Right. And I thought- Sounds like a question a biohacker would ask. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I thought, yeah, actually yeah. I can. I've been doing it for years. Yeah. So that you were one of the first people to, I mean, I think you were the second or third person mm -hmm. to get a full body stem cell makeover <laughs> yeah. close to five years ago mm -hmm. and because i proceed with great caution with everything <laughs> like for, for someone who's done the protocol sure. hundreds of times yeah, before it's sure. actually done on me but but quick thing back in 2010 mm -hmm. when you were saying you were treating these cowboys you you uh, alluded to the fact that not a lot of people were doing stuff like this in the united states and to my recollection Back in 2010, this was when you heard about cats like you know Peyton Manning or, mm -hmm. or guys in the NFL or the NBA actually going overseas Abroad, to get yeah. stem cells mm -hmm. done. Now, mm -hmm. now at this point, was that kind of like most of where people were going for stem cells? Yeah, there was just a small number of people doing it in the U.S. I was about number ten or so, mm -hmm. 
and nobody was really sharing any information. That's why those first years I would do a month at home and my practice was slow because I had a burn the ships approach and I mm -hmm. just did stem cells. And so I would do a month here and then I'd alternate months and I'd go th travel through South America learning from the maestros. And there was a lot being done overseas. So a lot of those guys would go, some of them were going to Europe, not so much for stem cells, more for this like, th these kind of like turbo PRP type treatments. Okay. But a lot of a lot of those pro athletes were going to South America because it's been big in South America for a long time. Was it actually? Oh, I assume it was legal in the U.S. when you were doing it, unless you want to admit on a podcast you're breaking the <laughs> law. Yeah, well, like it's that. all you know. This is a new field and mm -hmm. it's evolving. You know, mm -hmm. and there's certain elements that are clearly legal, and uh -huh. there's others that are a bit of a gray area, and then there's other things that are not legal that clearly we do not do. So. The main thing that you can do abroad that you cannot do in the United States is culture expansion of stem cells. Okay. So that means either you take a person's own stem cells or you take stem cells from an umbilical cord and you grow them in the laboratory so you get these massive doses, these mm -hmm. you know, 200 million stem cells and then deliver that. We cannot do that in the United States. Now the V cells, mm -hmm. where do those come from and where do those fit in? What, what exactly are the V cells? So the V cell stands for a very small embryonic like stem cell. Okay. And these are stem cells that are actually in your blood, um, but they live in this kind of hibernation state, this quiescent state where they're not active, but they're just there. Um, and the interesting thing about V cells is they're actually more primitive than the mesenchymal stem cells that we get from your bone marrow, which means that they actually have the ability uh, to differentiate or become other types of cells more easily. Okay. And they also seem to be more active and have more signaling ability. And so the problem was in the past, we didn't know how to activate V cells. Like we could take right. your blood, and they're in there, but they're like hiding and they're not doing anything. Right. Um, but there's been a few things over the years that, that different protocols that have made it easier to activate those V cells and to make them start like proliferating, pr proliferating and dividing and becoming more active. And so the one we use is, is a laser um, by Dr. Todd Obakaitis, and we essentially laser activate the PRP from your blood okay. and sort of turn on these V cells. And we use So you're taking that. the plasma, mm -hmm. my plasma. Your plasma blasting it with a laser light, right? and that's activating these very small embryonic-like stem cells in the plasma right? to be able to do what? To do the same types of things we're trying to get any of the stem cells to do. To, so okay. to signal repair, regeneration, healing, you know, to signal improved blood flow, all the things that we're, you know, depending on where we're putting them. So they, it's, the idea is that they may be acting like other stem cells, but they may have more activity even than the stem cells in your bone marrow or your fat. Now, I talked to a guy a long time ago about V cells, and he was telling me, it was, it was Doc, and he was telling me that he would take blood out and like freeze it overnight to, to mm -hmm. stress the blood. So, could you say that basically what you're doing is stressing the blood, in this case with mm -hmm. lasers, or you could stress the blood with cold, or I don't know, you could stress the blood with. Yeah. Having to run a marathon or, or whatever to, to activate these V cells? Yeah, some of the other protocols involve like heat and cold and kind of going back and forth between heat and cold. Okay. So it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like what people do, you know, with their saunas and their cold plunges, but it's on a smaller level. Okay. <laughs> Super interesting. Now, now how, how new is this whole V cell thing? Like, is this like, like pretty cutting edge or? I think V cells were first described in the scientific literature in like 2008. Okay. And uh, and like Amy was saying, I had heard of some protocols of how to prepare the V cell, you, freezing the blood and thawing it, but it was very time intensive and it required that you would keep the blood overnight. Well, then you have this whole issue of whether or not you're a blood bank now, because when you keep stuff overnight, it sort of changes the whole picture of what it is that you're doing. So we were very excited when we heard about Todd Ovokites, who developed mm -hmm. this laser Todd that, Ovokites? Todd Ovokites. Okay. His, I think his website is Dr. Todd. Okay. And, uh, and he, he, along with an award-winning physicist, uh, developed this laser that actually activates the VSCLs, the very small embryonic-like stem cells. And the way we know, he actually has peer-reviewed published data showing that when you zap, you know, because you, like Amy was saying, you concentrate these VSCLs. Mm -hmm. Like anytime you do PRP, you're concentrating the, the V cells but yeah. they're completely asleep. But when you zap them with the laser, they, they grow like 100X. 
Wow. So they measure the number before and after zapping. And if, it gro- if, if the population grows 100x, it means they're activated. Mm-hmm. And just what you, got, what you were saying about you know, the freezing and thawing, how that's similar, really, I mean, that's, that's biohacking. And, and that's why possibly one of the major advantages to a lot of things like cold plunges and that sort of thing, what, the benefits that you get actually is because of the activation of your own endogenous VSEL. No kidding. Okay, now I'm just going to tell people I wake up and I do some V-selling. V-selling. <laughs> we're we're, we're all biohacking. Yeah. We're just all V-selling. Okay, so um, so what actually happens in there in that 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 secret room when once you actually get me on the table and you have all this all this different stuff? What's the actual sequence? Obviously, there's two of you, so each of you are doing mm-hmm. different things, but. You can each kind of explain what what your unique flavor of of yeah, makeover sure. Sure. is, but but explain to me what's going on. Right yeah, now. sure. So during your treatment today, we'll actually create a uh, a time lapse video. So we'll probably show it at this point. Yeah. But oh, and by the way, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a, a link for everybody who's listening or watching. If you go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash stem cell podcast. It's bengreenfieldfitness.com slash stem cell podcast. I'll link to videos, the time lapse stuff that Harry's talking about. And uh, even the, we, we did another episode a long time ago getting more into the history of this. So, so I'll put all that in there at bengreenfieldfitness.com slash stem cell podcast. Mm-hmm. But go ahead, Harry. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do what we call an ozone dialysis, also called EBO2 extracorporeal blood oxygenation and ozonation. So we're gonna essentially purify your blood. We hook you up to a dialysis machine. The blood is pumped out of one arm. It passes through a box where the blood is bombarded with ultraviolet radiation. Then it passes through a filter Mm -hmm. where the blood is filtered and impregnated with uh, ozone gas. Passes through another box. Blood pregnant with gas. (laughs) I like it. I knew I'd get some second grade humor. Out of that. <laughs> uh, then it passes through another light box that bombards the blood with uh, far infrared uh, red red light therapy, okay. which is you know just like regular red light therapy, except we're treating the blood. So we run that for forty five minutes. So we're treating your entire blood supply. Wow. So when we do this big bone marrow aspiration, which is comprised largely of blood, it's really purified blood. So you're almost like doing an oil change for my blood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean that's the clo- that's yeah. the best way to describe it. Yeah, but you it. do it before the surgery. Immediately so before. So you get higher quality bone marrow right. aspirate when you do that. Right. Okay. Then we get you on the table. You go to sleep. We have a board certified anesthesiologist who puts you to sleep. Uh, I'll do the bone marrow no, aspiration. Me, I can just do the self hypnosis thing. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty good at that. We'll do, okay. I'll count myself down. I'll be good. Trust me. I won't box, feel a thing. Box breathing. Yeah. yeah. Just have a sledgehammer on hand just in case. <laughs> So we'll do the bone marrow. Okay. Uh, we'll have already drawn your blood during the EBO2. Uh, then we'll prepare the bone marrow mix it with, the, with the VSEL, with the exosomes. Then we'll start injecting the entire length of your spine. First, we'll do epidurals, epidur- stem cell epidural injections. So okay. putting stem cells in the epidural space. And that's to help with arthritis because a major part of arthritis is that central stenosis, narrowing of the spinal mm-hmm. canal. Mm-hmm. So we'll do epidurals in the low back and the neck. Then we'll do facet injections starting at C1, C2, and then every level, both sides, all the way down, SI ligament, both sides, iliolumbar ligament, both sides. Okay. During that time, Amy's already doing your scalp. Then we'll flip you over, do both shoulders, both elbows, both wrists and thumbs, both hips, both knees, both ankles, and great toe. And that's my part. And then kind of while that's happening, I'll do facial injections, and then I'll do microneedling of the face and neck and apply the stem cells and exosomes topically. So we're kind of getting okay. all levels of the skin, like the deeper skin and the sort right. of outer skin. And then at the very end, we have everyone leave except for me and the anesthesia guy, and I'll do the penis injections and then the shockwave therapy at the end. Well, I'm glad I at least have my privacy you for do. the penis you do. injections. <laughs> and I, I, you do the great toe, but not the other toes, Harry. You you, you went through that pretty quickly. It, it, I you do know, the, the great. Other toe, the other toes are not important. You're just gonna leave them out. If somebody has yeah. a problem with the yeah. other toes, we will do it. But I don't yeah. routinely do it because the great toe yeah. is so often an arthritic right. it, joint. It is. It's it's the one where if, people have the most. If someone issues. has issues, then yeah. we'll do it. I mean, you yeah. know, clearly we take requests. You know, we do a lot of intervertebral disc injections, mm-hmm. but unless somebody really needs so it, so someone we don't could tend come to. in and do this and be like, hey, this is a part of my body. That I have mm-hmm. a, a big problem with, more pain with, and needs a little mm-hmm. more TLC. Yeah. You can focus a little Absolutely. bit more Absolutely. on that area. Absolutely. Now, now, what are because you talk about the beat up cowboys, and obviously, I would imagine 
and, and maybe this is just my romanticized idea of a beat up cowboy. That these guys are just you know hobbling in with a shoulder and knee uh-huh. and back and a whole bunch of stuff. But you know what what are some of to be more specific the general reasons that someone will come in for this besides the whole just like anti aging mm-hmm. longevity keep my stem cell pool up you know because I know a lot of biohackers are doing for that. But what are some other things that this is effective for that kind of like your shoulder story mm-hmm. you were telling people would come and do instead of doing a scope or instead mm-hmm. of doing a, a cortisol injection? Sure. So with full body, st- about half our practice now is full body stem cell makeover and about half of those guys are busted up cowboys and the other half are biohackers who are in pretty good shape but want to do it more preventatively. However, we still do site specific, I can sometimes call it a la carte treatments where you know, we'll do someone's low back. Usually we don't just do one area because most people have a couple of areas, but mm-hmm. frequently we'll do low back and a knee or something like that, you know, just a couple of areas. Uh, we sort of specialize in spine, so we're one of the few places mm-hmm. in the country that in, that actually injects intervertebral discs. Okay. And that's probably like something we do, I, mean, I would say that's something we do a lot of to answer and would that question. technically be like disc degeneration or just general low back pain? Or? Well, it's, it, that's why it's important to do a history because okay. there's two ways that a disc can cause pain. One is if it's herniate, herniated, if it's mm-hmm. poking out and it's pressing on a nerve root, then that's causing leg pain. We don't usually inject the disc for that because we would risk making the herniation worse, but we would do epidurals to help try to shrink the disc. Okay. However, if somebody has true disc pain, and that's usually caused by desiccation, dehydration of the disc, and that's characterize the hallmark is sort of that midline pain worse bending forward and especially like holding a baby out in front holding you know a weight in front and leaning right. slightly forward like putting a baby in a crib for instance right midline pain worse bending forward that's always disc pain and that's that's in the low back when we'll inject the disc in the neck i do a lot fewer discs just because by the time people get to the point where they have severe burning in both hands mm-hmm. and that's kind of the rubric for that uh, by the time they have that, they're usually getting their neck fused anyway. But if I get them, we actually do quite well tr- doing cervical discs as well. What about athletes with uh, like cartilage or meniscal issues, things mm-hmm. like that? Yeah, we do great with sort of chronic issues. Mm-hmm. I don't really treat acute injuries. So if, right. if somebody like an like, ACL tear or something like that. Yeah, because yeah. The, frequently that needs surgery. Yeah. Or, it, or if it's like a rotator cuff tear, for instance, it might get better. Like, you yeah. know, you can live just fine with a rotator cuff tear and you so there's no reason to do it like acutely because you might get better or you might need surgery so i usually wait the person has to have the issue for at least a year before we think about okay makes sense amy describe to me what happens aesthetically as a result and describing what happens sexually as a result from doing what you're doing while harry's doing all the the joints (laughs) and everything well, the scalp injections are for hair restoration or okay. for just helping hair to be thicker and, and healthier. So depending on if you have the hair loss or not, they can help with that. Well, um, I'm growing my hair out. So we're, I know. We're just, we're just been, pushing the gas pedal I've been, on it, right? I've been watching yeah. your, your, yeah. your content. It's looking fabulous. Um, this, the facial injections and microneedling are just to help with the health of the skin. So we're okay. really targeting the, skin, the, targeting the skin itself. So we're trying to help with you know, uh, the, the texture, the tone, the the sort of evenness of the skin, the, the, the glow of the skin. What about wrinkles? Does it help with wrinkles? It helps with fine lines okay. um, and wrinkles. It's not as good at giving back volume as mm-hmm. like a filller, like okay. a, you know, like a like Jupiter Botox. or something. Or, or Botox is different, it's, but, and that's stopping, the, that's stopping the wrinkles from moving at okay. all, but the muscles from moving. Um, so those things are a little bit different. Um, so if you need you know, volume or if you need like you know, a facelift, this is not gonna give those mm-hmm. things. However, it's great for just making your skin healthier, look healthier, actually be healthier, because you're increasing collagen and elastin and hyaluronic acid, which are all parts of skin that start to decline after mm-hmm. age 25 mm-hmm. or so. Now, now is, that, is this kind of like the, you know, I you know, see the magazines, the Hollywood secrets and what, what they do to stay young. Is this the kind of stuff they're doing it's the like kind of stuff, in yeah. Hollywood? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's usually a combination approach. You know, it's okay. like anything else; like it's not one thing. Mm-hmm. But this, like stem cells and PRP and exosomes, are great for making your skin like just look mm-hmm. glowy and and fresh and um, and more youthful. And then you can always add in other things, lasers yeah. or Botox or fillers, or you know, depending on kind of your appetite for those things. Okay, okay. And so that's the beauty component. And then, what are the effects of what you're doing from a sexual standpoint? So it, it kind of depends on what's happening. You know, like if you have someone who's 
who's really not having a lot of problems, like like he meant, like Harry mentioned, then usually the feedback is that it just things just feel better, like the improved right. sensation, um, yeah. improved orgasms. Um, That's it, similar to what happened to me last time. Like I wasn't broken, but I felt like basically. Actually, the, the two main things I noticed was it felt like I had more firmness and hardness, and that my orgasms were better. Like yeah. those were those are the main things. But what about like guys with like uh, ED or peronies, you know, things like that? Yeah, so we'll treat both of those with ED and peronies. Both I'll usually recommend after we do the injections, also doing some shockwave therapy, like Gaines Wave or similar, okay. um, at home because it, it really helps to to further activate the stem cells that I put in there. Um, but these are great treatments for those as well. And, and you know, I've had you know, I've had a lot of men who had pretty severe ED and, and with a combination approach between the, you know, the shockwave and the injections and maybe some hormones, mm-hmm. you know, we've been able to turn them around mm-hmm. um, completely, which is pretty amazing because that's yeah. really important. Yeah, and then what about for women? What goes on there? So with women, I'm injecting the anterior vaginal wall, kind of where the G spot is, mm-hmm. um, and then the clitoris. And so same kinds of things. We're still trying to increase blood flow. We're mm-hmm. trying to increase, you know, the health of the cells in the area. We can also see improvements in stress urinary incontinence. So mm-hmm. women who have, you know leak a little bit when they jump or sneeze, um, if we can kind of support the urethra a little bit with these mm-hmm. injections, then we can see improvements in that as well. So same kinds of things improve pleasure, improved um, ability to orgasm as well, and then the stress here during continence piece. Okay, got it. Um, I have I have some logistical questions. So I got my head wrapped around everything that's going on now, and, and I, we, we didn't even talk about V-cells and stuff the last time I was here. So these are some mm-hmm. new things that you're doing now, but some logistical questions. Um, first of all, what do people feel like after they do this? Because a lot of people are like, well, how many, how many days do I need to schedule? Is this like a surgery or I'm in bed for two weeks mm-hmm. after? So talk to me about what happens after. Yeah, it's a commitment. So, mm-hmm. you know, frequently, this is not something that you just decide you're going to do and come mm-hmm. in the next week. You know, yeah. this is... Granted, need... I did break the rules of race, the Spartan race, last <laughs> time, like five days after, but that was Don't not recommended. Don't do that. I, I actually, <laughs> I mean, well, Harry and I were talking before we came in here, like I actually, I messed up my ankle pretty good because I was just, everything's wobbly and, and weak. And there's and, fluid in there. Yeah, so you're, I, you're at, it's, yeah. yeah. So you're actually at increased risk of yeah. injury for but, a little but while. But I was contracted to do this race because mm-hmm. that was back when I was racing for the pro team. Mm-hmm. So I literally just like taped up my whole body you know all the kinesio tape and the braces went out there and raced in the mountains and i think i came in like fifth or sixth place or something like that so it, so I, I made it but i felt super <laughs> super beat up after yeah, yeah. um so anyways back to your explanation of what the gold standard recovery yeah so uh the short version is one week of so the the way that this treatment works is we're tricking your body into thinking that you've had a new injury mm-hmm. without actually having caused any tissue insult so you get all the benefit of a healing reaction without actually mm-hmm. having been hurt. Which, which, by the way, sorry to interrupt, is important because the, this has happened to a lot of people I've talked to, it's happened to me, you get a stem cell injection and a part of your body that had been injured mm-hmm. way back in the day flares up and a lot of people freak out. They're like, doc, you, like, you re-injured me, mm-hmm. but it's actually the body remembering going back mm-hmm. and repairing something that needs is that the good way to describe yeah, it? Yeah, the first two months is a roller coaster. You uh-huh. have good days, you have bad days, things are worse, things are better. It's mm-hmm. weird. But the first two months after protocol. Like yeah. This. So yeah. basically the, the the thumbnail is one week of taking it very easy. I mean, really mm-hmm. convalescing. And I don't mm-hmm. mean bed rest. Like you want to yeah. be up and moving. No CrossFit. Like n- nothing yes. that's gonna like contuse your joint surfaces right. or your spine. Second week you kind of reintroduce normal daily activity, and then two months no new injuries. Mm-hmm. So no falling on your keister. I wouldn't do mm-hmm. any mountain biking. I wouldn't even really ski or snowboard because if mm-hmm. someone collides into you, like you want to really give yourself. And the people who are the most disciplined about those two months of you know movement and you can do strength training and all that, but just nothing where you actually have the potential of getting injured, those are the people who do the best. Okay. All right. What about sex? Can you have sex after? You can, yeah. From my perspective, my, my procedures, there's no downtime. Okay. Like if it wasn't for everything else going on, you could have sex right afterwards, you could run a marathon afterwards, right. you, know, you could do anything. Just don't have sex on a mountain bike or, uh, that, or, well, or well rock climbing. I, would, that, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Cir- no yeah. Cirque du Soleil stuff. Right, right. Um, <laughs> just, just, just for the Instagrams. Um, and so another logistical question, let's talk about like insurance, payments, investments. Like, What are people expecting out of this as far as what it actually costs? 
Yeah, the, this is considered experimental. Insurance mm-hmm. does not pay for it at all. Mm-hmm. So this is entirely out of pocket. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. Um, ballpark for, for these type of protocols. Because uh, I think you have different levels, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, so talk me through that. Yeah, so when, we, when we're talking about full body stamp, well, let's back up. So if someone's just treating like their knee or their low back or something, uh, the biggest expense is getting started, mm-hmm. harvesting the stem cells, preparing the stem cells, renting out the room, getting anesthesia here, everything else. So it starts at about tw- between twenty and 25000 uh, for a more complex case, is more like 30000 uh, Full body stem cell makeover, if it's just me doing the orthopedic, mm-hmm. starts at 40000 If it's the two of us, we call out a four hands. Four hands. Yeah. Is that it, because there's there's two of you? I was yeah, going to say four yeah, of you. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's sixty. Th- and I right. say it starts at 60000 because mm-hmm. it can go up. If people want to use additional vials of exosomes, mm-hmm. uh, then we you know we can do that. But it starts at forty or 60000 Gotcha. And, and does it matter, like you talk about exosomes um, and, and placental matrix mm-hmm. and some of these things, does it matter where you get that stuff from? Oh, I've, absolutely. I've been to some conferences and talked to some doctors about like, oh, I'm a, uh, what's, what's the company, like a Camara guy or uh, mm-hmm. there's other companies. Mm-hmm. So what, how, do you, how do you know, like what's good? A lot of due diligence, like actually visiting the facility type due diligence because mm-hmm. there's a broad spectrum. Now, a lot of the really... I want to. I hate to use the term bad actors, but some of the real like businesses that needed to be put out of business have been put out of business. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the ones that are left are at least reasonably reputable, but some more than others. We currently use Organicel, and they're furthest along in the in sort of the FDA approval pathway. That's for the exosomes, Organicel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. the company that we use, and we feel very good about using them. We use them on ourselves. We use them on our parents. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about the placental matrix? Does that matter? Well, like, that's well. With or, the Organicel product is a combination of exosomes with placental matrix, so okay. it comes in one vial. Okay, I'm very picky about my placentas. Mm-hmm. I only want them to come from from fine, finely raised placenta <laughs> sources, <laughs> organic, yeah. no pesticides, no herbicides on my placenta. Um, now. You talk about biohackers who mm-hmm. will come in and do something like this. Obviously, biohackers also like their cryotherapy, their their infrared light. They're jumping up and down on a trampoline. I saw one of those in your office. Um, what are things that you could stack with something like this to make it even better? Like, like what have you found some of these super smart cats, these biohackers who are coming in to be treated by you? Mm-hmm. Like, Are there things that they're doing in addition to this that amplify the effectiveness of it? Well, personally, you know, I generally get two types of people in here. People who are doing all of that stuff and know far better than I do what works well for them. And people who, even if I recommended this type of stuff to them, they wouldn't do it anyway. So I generally don't make a lot of recommendations. I think all of that stuff is good. Mm -hmm. The one recommendation I do make is against some, is not not doing multi-day fasting before you come in. Because I find if people do multi-day fasting before you the bastard, procedures... You told me not to eat breakfast this morning. Well, that, the multi-day. So yeah, okay. you, you need to be NPO the For me, morning. not eating breakfast is basically just yeah. as bad as multi-day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need to not eat the morning mm-hmm. of your procedure. But if people do like a four-day fast leading up to it, mm-hmm. it's really hard for them to sort of bounce back. They're okay. really, really weak afterwards. Okay. So that's the, the really the only thing that I sort of advise people. Because most of the people who are coming to us are doing all this great stuff. Stuff, mm-hmm. And it, I think it's all helpful. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a big fan of red light therapy afterwards, okay. um, especially for the skin stuff, because we know that can help with healing time and you know decreased bruising and just kind of helping to activate the stem cells in the skin. So I like the red light therapy afterwards, um, and I also like that some sort of nitric oxide booster okay. know, supplements before right. and continuing on afterwards, because we know nitric oxide works in combination with stem cells to like activate Like arginine, them. beetroot, things exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Like okay. That. Got it. What about pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, PEMF? I've I've heard a lot of people talk about how that mobilizes Mm -hmm. stem cells or helps with stem cells. Like if you do it along the the femur, you know, trigger some kind of release by the bone marrow. Is that something that that you guys have looked into at all or that you, yeah, do you have anybody come in and then go lay on PEMF after or anything like that? We don't have any here in the office. Mm -hmm. People definitely do it before and after. And I think I like PEMF. I have one at home myself, but but we haven't experimented to see kind of 
benefits. Okay. Generally leading up to the procedure, I uh -huh. don't want to mobilize stem cells because I want to sneak up on them. Okay. I want to catch them by surprise. I want them to all be in the bone marrow so I can oh, harvest okay, them. Yeah. If, if you take, because there's, there's, you know, if there's certain medications you can take that will make the stem cells leave your bone marrow and go into your blood flow. And there's certain biohacking methods that will do that yeah. too. But I don't really want that because I want to yeah. sneak up on them. No, my, my, my bone marrow will be good. I'll tell you why. There's this, there's one company, they're totally not sponsoring this podcast or anything like that, but they're called Ancestral Supplements. They make like liver and heart and kidney, but they, they make these little capsules and they're just bone marrow capsules. Mm. And I'm like addicted. I pop those like candy. I've been eating like 20 bone marrow capsules a day for like the past month. Because I because uh, honestly, I just, I thought, you know, I wonder what bone marrow actually tastes like when it's powdered. And it tastes really good. It's got like this umami. So anyways, I literally have been eating bone marrow like every day for the past month. So hopefully my bone marrow is good. The other one I want to ask you about was hyperbaric. Because mm -hmm. that's another one that's a lot, a lot of times brought up as something that can mm -hmm. help with stem cells. Obviously, it helps with recovery, so it would be good for maybe some of the incisions or some of the some of the tissue afterwards. But what about for the stem cell component? Anything to that? Do you guys know? I think it, I think for recovery, it would be fantastic. We don't mm -hmm. have one here, but we, mm -hmm. you know, definitely have looked into that as something that maybe at some point mm -hmm. in the future we'll get one because okay. I think the combination, the one-two punch of sort of a stem cell procedure and something like hyperbarics would be is pretty pretty okay. solid. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. And then how long does this actual procedure take? Like obviously we're going from here and to do that. You said the EBU mm -hmm. was 45 minutes, but then once I'm out of the EBU, what's the expectation for the full body? When it's the two of us, it's about three hours. Okay. And then yeah. we keep you here another hour or two to wake yeah. up. Yeah, so that, that's a pretty pretty long period of time. Yeah, it's a yeah. big it's a big. I mean, that's it's that's that's why it's expensive because it's the two of us working the entire time, mm -hmm. and it you know took us years to do it. It's an expensive facility, lots of expensive equipment. Yes. Uh, so you lots know. of gadgets here. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will say uh, I would like to mention my tithing program. Because, okay. uh, so I mean, I, I th when you were here, I'm trying to remember if I had, I didn't have it up and going when last time you were here, Okay. but I have a tithing program. So uh, back in, uh, on Christmas Eve of 2016, uh, I had a stroke and it turned out the stroke was caused by a bacterial infection of my heart and it, right. I required a aortic valve replacement. And it turns out it was from bad dental work, wow. but, uh, but you know, I had this open heart cardiac bypass Holy surgery cow. with the sternotomy. And after that, you know, I had the opportunity to experience pain that was a 10 out of 10, which I had never experienced before. And um, I was you know, laying in this bed just saying like, what's the silver lining here? Like, what's the lesson? Why am I experiencing this? And what I came up with was that getting people out of pain is a gift. And even if you have something that's the most wonderful development in medicine, if someone can't afford it, it doesn't do them any good. So that was the birth of the tithing program. So uh, since that time, for the, about the time I met you was about mm -hmm. when we launched it. Uh, for people who can't afford it, for people who are living below poverty line, first we just ask to see their taxes to verify that they are in fact living below poverty line. Then there's two pathways for enrollment. Right. One is for combat service veterans, if you've served this country in, in combat, I'm happy to do the treatment free, no, mm. no charge, and I get everything donated, and you know, so it's like, we're good. Uh, the other is if you're not a combat service veteran is I will do it in exchange for documentation of community service hours. Okay. No so we've been doing that for about four years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we do one day a month, and uh, it's been, so much fun to do. We get just the terif most terrific people in here to do it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's admirable. I like that. I also like that you ask for verification. You know, if you see somebody pull up in yeah. a Tesla for their, <laughs> their time, stem cell protocol, <laughs> your eyebrow gets raised. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's really cool. And so everything from the information on the tithing program to the mm -hmm. full body makeover to the e-boot, everything you mm -hmm. guys do here, what is the best place for people to go if they want to just inquire or find out more mm -hmm. or schedule it? Where, where sure, do people there's, go? What do they it's do? docereclinics.com, D-O-C-E-R-E clinics.com. There on the home page is a link to my Nick Nanton film. Okay. Uh, it's a 60 minute documentary film that's free to watch, tells the whole story, Amy's in it. 
Uh, that's if, you know, for people who really want to do a deep dive. Okay. There's also a link to my ebook, which you have a hard copy there. Yeah, yeah, this book. I'll hold it up for those of you who are watching. Yeah. It's called The Stem Cell Solution. I, I read it, uh, you and I were at a conference a couple mm-hmm. months ago, Harry, and, and uh, you gave it to me. I read it down there at the conference, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's it's a great, if, if you're going to do the protocol, I'll hold it up for the camera. It's called Stem Cell Solution with, uh, it appears to be like a ripped Santa Claus on the front <laughs> holding up a paddleboard. And so that I think if you want to read more information about what we were just talking about and wrap your head around whether or not you'd want to do this or what happens during, that's a good read for you, the stem cell solution. Um, and I will also, for the Dosiri clinics, people have trouble spelling or remembering mm-hmm. Dosiri, what I'll do is at bengreenfieldfitness.com slash stem cell podcast. I'll link to all this stuff so you can just hunt it down and I'll also link to, to the other show that I did a long time ago with Harry. So you can find out whether or not my, my voice is higher or lower or how much differently we all look. Hopefully we've all reversed aged by like six years since the last show based on everything we, we've We've learned yeah, that absolutely. we do it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, awesome. You guys, thank you so much. And uh, obviously, if you are watching or listening to this, there'll be some accompanying material because we're going to get some extra photos and some cool, like Terry said, time lapse and mm-hmm. some cool stuff from the actual protocol that we're about to go on and do next. So it's all going to be at bengreenfieldfitness.com slash stem cell podcast. Amy and Harry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.